Hi, this is Dale Buchanan, the host of Puppy Talk Podcast. Before we get started today, I wanted to let you know of my new book, The Complete Puppy Training Manual. It's available on Amazon in four formats Kindle ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. You can find it on Amazon right now. It's called The Complete Puppy Training Manual, and I will put a link in the show notes of this episode. I'm Dale Buchanan, and this is Puppy Talk, the podcast that offers advice on how to raise a healthy, happy, and obedient puppy. This podcast is sponsored by Top Gun Dog Training. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast now so you don't miss a single episode of Puppy Talk. Welcome to Puppy Talk episode number 21. Today I'd like to talk to you about Great training for puppies. Whenever I go to clients' homes and they have a new young puppy, they're often having trouble crate training the puppy. The puppy doesn't like the crate. The puppy's crying and whining in the crate, and they need my advice. And I'd spend a significant amount of time with the puppy owners, getting their puppy used to the crate and actually loving the crate so that they can leave the house and the puppy just falls asleep or just lays down and does nothing. So I'm going to give you six tips on what you want to do and four tips on what you do not want to do for crate training your puppy. Let's get started. The goal is for the puppy to associate a positive experience with the crate. Now Dixie's one year old and right now while I'm recording this, she's lying in her crate with the door open and she's just chilling out and sleeping. She doesn't want to leave the crate because she likes the crate. When I go take a shower because she's a big chewer. I say, I'm going to take a shower and she goes in the crate and lays down. When I say, I'm leaving, I'm going to work, she goes in the crate and lays down. And I shut the door during that time because she'll go around the house and she'll chew a lot of things. She's a mini Australian shepherd and she likes to chew. A couple of times when I took a shower, she chewed all of the cords to my computer and my phone in about five minutes. So I have no choice. I know a lot of owners don't like crate training. They are totally against what they say caging their dog. But you know what? 99% of the people that call me to help with their puppies have me help them with crate training. The 1% that don't want crate training, that's fine. But I can tell you this, without confining your puppy, you're going to have a harder chance getting your puppy potty trained and to stop chewing things in the house when you're gone. I do what the owner wants, and most of them want crate training. Let's get started. Tips of what to do. Number one, use treats to lure your puppy into the crate so that they have fun and associate that the crate is a good thing and they're going to get fed by the crate. Throw some treats in the crate and allow your puppy to go in there. Do not Shove your puppy in the crate and close the door. That's a big no-no. Number two, have puppy lie down in the crate with the food lure or one time saying down or lie down. Number three, feed your puppy in the crate using their food bowl, a licky mat, or a Kong, stuffed Kong food toy, which is a mental stimulation toy. You can put some kibble in the Kong run some water through there, freeze it, put that in the crate, and your puppy will spend a good 15 to 20 minutes eating his meal in the crate. And that will have him develop an association, a positive association with the crate. Tip number four is play games with your puppy in the crate. I've shown videos of this recently on the Top Gun Dog Training Instagram page. So if you get a chance, go ahead and check those out. Tip number five, close crate door for intervals of 30 seconds. So you want to do it like this. Lure the puppy into the crate. Have them lay down. Don't shove them into the crate and don't force them in there. Lure them in. Have them go in on their own. They lay down. You close the door for 30 seconds, but you don't close the latch because the latch of the door could be a trigger for the puppy to start getting upset. 
close the door for 30 seconds, open the door back up, let the puppy come out of the crate, lure the puppy back in again, close the door for one minute, open the door back up, let the dog come out of the crate, and do that again, intervals of 30 seconds. Work up to several minutes at a time of the puppy being calm in the crate. If it gets to the point where you want to leave your house and the puppy is not happy in the crate, you want to get a camera, like a baby camera on Amazon for $25, for example. Something that can hook up to your Wi-Fi that you can monitor on your phone. Put the camera by the crate so that you could see what your puppy is doing. Leave the house and actually see how long they're putting up a fit. If they're barking and crying the whole time and you're going for 15 minutes, you're going to have to go back and do more work. Okay, you don't want to cause a lot of distress in the puppy and cause a lot of chaos. You might even find on the camera that the puppy's only crying for 10 or 15 seconds. And that's okay. Then you've accomplished a great goal. So the camera is going to be a big part of learning what your puppy does when you're gone. And usually when a puppy cries and barks in the crate as the owner leaves, it's only going to be for a few days and then they start to get used to it. So it's not something that's going to go on for months and months and months, or it shouldn't. If it does, you have to go back again to step number one, use treats, lure the puppy into the crate, play games, do an obstacle course with the crate, have them go in and out of the crate with you, having fun doing some obedience training there. And that's going to help the puppy learn a positive association with the crate. Now, what are some things that you don't want to do? You don't want to shove the puppy into the crate. You don't want to do that because the puppy is going to get upset from the very second that you handle them and throw them into the crate abruptly. They're going to have to develop a negative association with that. The next thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to yell at your puppy in the crate when they're barking or crying. You don't want to be saying this, no, stop, knock it off. That's a bad idea. Another thing that I do with Dixie is I don't have any bedding in the crate because she's a chewer. So I don't recommend you putting any bedding into the crate, nothing in the crate except for the pan at the bottom of the crate because some dogs or most dogs at that age also are not potty trained. So if you have a bed in there, then they're going to probably pee on the bed and then sleep on the other end of the crate. In addition, you don't want to have a crate that's too big because if the crate is so big that the puppy can pee and poop on one end and then sleep on the other end on their bed, then that's probably what they're going to do. So you want to have the crate just big enough to where they can't move around a lot, but move around a little bit. Usually if the puppy can sit in the crate and their head's about an inch or two under the top of the crate, that's the right size. With Dixie, I had to go through three different sizes of crate. I'm on her fourth crate right now. So I noticed that as she grew, she would sit and her head would hit the top of the crate. Oh, time for a new crate. I got the next size up. And I did that four times. And the final thing is don't let your puppy suffer in the crate. Go back to the steps number one through six of what to do so that you don't allow your puppy to suffer in the crate because you don't want your puppy rehearsing the behavior of associating negativity with the crate. Once they start doing that, it's going to be very hard to change. You don't want to leave your house for two hours and know that your puppy's crying and barking for two hours. That's a big problem. If you have an eight or 12 week old puppy, you're probably not going to be able to leave for very long or you're going to have to take the puppies puppy at that you. age cannot tolerate you being gone for that long. They're going to have to build up to it. So you're going to have to do a little work in steps one through six, like I mentioned, to get the puppy used to the crate so that you can leave for extended periods of time and keep the puppy into the crate. With Dixie, I started her crate training the first night that I had her. She cried for two minutes and never cried again because I didn't give her an alternative but to have fun and be happy in the crate. I did all of these steps that I'm mentioning here, and she loves the crate. She has never had any issues going in the crate on her own. I never have to tell her, and she's done that for 10 months now. So I hope these tips help with crate training your puppy. 
If you have any more questions about crate training or any other behavior issue with your puppy, you can contact us through our website at puppytalkpodcast.com. Have a great day. This is Dale Buchanan, host of Puppy Talk Podcast. I have an announcement of a new book that I just published called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback, soon to be available on audiobook. You can find out all the details of this book using the link in the show notes. It's called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's a comprehensive book with a simple and effective way to help potty train your puppy, and it really works. Check out the link in the show notes.